Hello fellow watchers and enjoyers, Ash and Piggy here back with a follow up to the Leo Burton Christmas theory video, the theory that suggests that Jack will be the one who dies at Christmas and they've released a follow up on their channel Entertainment World to explain their side of the theory so we're going to react to it, it's 25 minutes long so if you want to get the video up uh, remind me to put a link in the description, you can watch it through with us um all right i guess i'll just three to one it for all the people at home three two three, one two one hello and welcome back to entertainment world in this video i will be going over my yeah, that's really christmas fun. day 2023 who i think the seven victims could be and who does i think the seven women could be um Victim. My theory. Seven victims and the seven women. I kept all my theories out of the way. Okay. I think you know that the women. this year's Christmas Day, it would be a good idea to split it into two. So we have the first episode, which is to the traditional seven thirty slot. Yeah. Half an hour long. Yeah. Seven thirty half have an hour slot. The second part of Christmas Day, which would be about quarter past nine, half past nine. Can you turn it off um, again, Mom? And be like Sorry, five Lisa. minutes, maybe an hour long. I mean, I can't. I'm not going to turn it off. Then basically, we have an hour and a half long. Oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's just a quiet video. But it's cut into two. Um, they're just saying about like an hour and a half total video. I will just say. Two. As someone who's been doing this a while. So to start off, I'll be maybe going over the Cathy Cotton don't, maybe don't have and the phone, Rocky the phone Cotton like storyline. Um, so look, basically if, on Christmas Eve, either, either I remember will be reveal to Cathy what Rocky has awesome. been get it like a doing high angle, with how get it he set up on the you, cat you know, you to explode. See all the fucking and also you know how like he's been like, uh, gambling uh, away all of their money. As this a, will lead Cathy to you know, be having flashbacks yeah, throughout the there, first right? episode. Yeah, um, the Cathy and Rocket storyline won't have a massive part yeah, of the first episode, because I, mean, uh, I my want to focus time. on well, other storylines, namely being mainly the Shavin and Keanu stuff, because I'll be writing Keanu out in this Christmas Day episode. Okay. Um, also, I will be... I mean, there will be the Nish Suki storyline which will be a main part of both episodes and also the side storyline in this episode will be the Jack and Denise back, stuff um yeah um this will lead Cathy to have some flashbacks okay so they're expecting the Cathy and Rocky stuff to be revealed on Christmas Eve that obviously Rocky set the set the foot set the cafe on fire and also that he's gambling, and this is going to give her some some flashbacks, maybe like some, maybe just some stuff that Rocky said that like sounded a bit weird, but now it makes sense. You know, just going through that. That's what I think is the first take, but not too much of the Rocky and Kathy stuff going on on the Christmas day, or at least in the first episode rather. While yeah, connecting up all the dots and realizing. That Harvey was actually telling the truth. The Kathy and Rocky storyline. Right. Keanu's I've already right said won't have a mess part of the first episode of Christmas Day, like which will be thirty like minutes, minutes long. The traditional and length of All an right. episode. However, it will be a mess and part of the second days, episode yeah. on Christmas Day. Which will be between forty five minutes and an hour long. As th as at the Bill's Christmas dinner table, Kathy will reveal to the whole Bill family oh, okay. what so Rocky has been up believing to. That obviously Ian then would tell Bobby Kathy's and Peter not to leave the table she doesn't want to. and an enraged um, Cindy. Oh, I turned off the phone. Now I can hear Rocky as she almost lost a third child because of Rocky. She could have lost Peter because of Rocky, and she. I just... So I, just... I do like the idea. I do want them to have two Christmas episodes this year. I, I, yeah, it feels because... selfish, but I'm I'm happy to have it. 
Um, because last year they had an hour, like year after they had an hour. They usually have an hour. But this is building to a like big finale, and you probably need it post watershed, as we're gonna see someone get fucking killed. So you do need that extra time after like post watershed. Also show good faith for all the viewers, like from the BBC to go, you know what, fair enough, EastEnders, you've been really good this year. You know, good job. You get this much. Personally, what I do is I'd have all the Christmas drama on the Halloween episode. So that's where they get all oh, they're like, Oh, you People slept with Emma. Sat the How? Turkey and yeah. Sat and the then turkey. the second part the um the second part obviously focusing on Karen on a Karen Sharon and Keanu's marriage. Like yeah. so obviously in the first episode I'm just gonna give a basis theory. The first episode they get married, but that's not the duff duff is obviously probably Phil shagging Emma is probably the duff duff, is my guess. And then the or, or the duff duff is Keanu telling Sharon he kidnapped not his child, but Phil's child and yeah. her child. And obviously Sharon and telling basic- him that uh Yeah. And then we open part two with obviously Sharon telling Keanu, look, you're not the father. And then Keanu gets storms off. And then maybe, maybe, you know, like in wrestling where they have that one heel who says something about baby face. And then maybe they reappear. They fucking, you know, smack him in the ankle. Maybe Keanu rears his head in one last time and fucking tries to attack Sharon. But he's not the body on the floor. So maybe he does that. Maybe he's the sneak attack heel. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um... Yeah, I think honestly, I think the I think the half hour episode should purely be building. It is just tensions are just rising dramatically, like everything's about to fucking erupt. And you know, like maybe some, maybe even like maybe maybe it end the first episode ends with like a kind of unknown person entering the vic, and then with all the six women. And then it's like duff duff, and you're like, oh, what the fuck's happening? But yeah. Uh... Guys, do you know who enters the pick at the half seven episode? He's back. Third time around. Denton Watts. Fucking come on in. A hologram this time. You can't kill him. He's hologram. <laughs> uh, because of Rocky. And she's only just got Peter back, basically. Um... Yeah. And okay, so. the confrontation between mainly Kathy, Rookie, and Cindy, and also a bit Ian, because Ian has to be involved at some point. He is a mainstay of the soap. He's been in it since the first episode. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I like that. I like that. Just gotta. So, um... <laughs> I don't know why, he, why Ian send them away like they're fucking 13. Go to your room. I'm, fuck, I'm an adult. Go fuck off. Leave us. We have to sort this out. Um, obviously, Kathy different. will will reveal that obviously Rocky set the cafe on fire, which would set off Cindy. I think. I think you'd also have the knights here as well. I think you'd have like the knights here, and you know, even George would be like, "What the fuck?" Even Elaine would be like, "What the fuck?" Rocky. Um. See Ash. You know, be the difference. Do you know, like when they send them off to the table or off the fuck off up to the room. You see, you see, like Bobby and, and Bobby and Peter would just fuck off. You just have me get a bit more mash there. Get a bit, <laughs> give me that leg of the turkey. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I'm fucking leaving a minute. Give me a second. Fuck off. <laughs> Seconds. Come on, Ian. Um, yeah. All right. That's just interesting. Yeah. Essentially. Cindy yelling at Rocky. Little gap, but he has to be involved because it did also involve Bobby, his son, and Some also just remind Peter. themselves what the theory is. Um, we all do three am on the bog, and this would lead upstairs, and it would Cindy, lead Kathy, to Rocky and Ian. Rocky being pushed violently downstairs by Cindy in a in a rage. Um, and he will presumably yeah. die. All right. However, it will later be revealed on either Boxing Day or the 27th, Rocky didn't actually die. And he steals all of the money um, from 
Okay. Ian, Cindy, and Kathy. And this will lead basically to um, a massive flyover race throughout 2024 between Kathy and Ian and Cindy. It'll also leave the door They're open. Fine, leave the door open for um, Brian Connolly. Okay. So they've suggested that Cindy will push Rocky down the stairs. I assume in the Violently. wheelhouse violently um which will kind of it'll, it, i'm not saying i'm getting 20 2018 flashbacks with alfie on the fucking stairs oh i bet i'm getting some I, mad 2018 is, flashbacks with alfie getting pushed down the stairs and i'm i I'm just i and i then, need i need i don't i don't care I, even if this does come true i don't care i need i need rocky to do his best out you you <laughs> You women are all the same. You're all the same. You're all the fucking same. <laughs> I um, need it. I, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, and obviously this will result in Rocky. They'll be. He'll be presumed dead, but obviously he'll escape, and then he's going to take all the money and fuck off. Seemingly, I like it. I. I. I think it's the worth. It's because the way with Rocky is you don't. You don't know how to make him leave. Like you do, you either want him to like do the Frank Butcher and just fuck off because he's useless. Um, and you know, obviously his relationship with Harvey's gonna be dead. You know, like he he he'll he'll leave with nothing. Maybe Bobby and maybe Bobby will be kind of sad because you know he, he was kind of like a father figure for him for a while. Um, um and maybe and maybe Jasper stays. No, nothing no. mentioned about Jasper. Um, well, no, you so... have to keep Jasper. But I think it would work. It also work with the storyline. Um, and I mean, I feel like I, I feel like yeah. Also, Ian and Cindy do have the Marbella money as well, so they are kind of set up for a while. Um, so it would make sense. And Rocky's probably just going to take the money and fuck off. Let's carry. To come back as Rocky Cotton if he ever wants to, I think it would also be quite a fitting exit, as it would be a bit like Frank Butcher. -ish. Esque, oh. which makes sense because because Frank Butcher and Rocky Cotton are very very similar characters. Oh. And before people start saying in the comments, this is also a bit like Alfie's exit in twenty eighteen. I'm not trying to do it like Alfie's exit. It makes sense, Cindy pushing him downstairs because of what happened with Peter. And I don't want to see him die. He. He either deserves to go to prison. Look at me go. I'm connecting all the dots, motherfucker. I'm in this guy's brain. Or this person's brain, rather. Me and Lou, Leo Burton are the same. Um, suggesting that there's a lot of parallels between Rocky and Frank Butcher. Who's, who's just been talking about Frank Butcher? It's me. Um, I'm not entirely... I guess it would make sense. Well, essentially... Is angling that maybe because Kathy like pretty much got uh, Rocky sent away, like he pretty much forced him to leave, that it would be a bit of a rivalry between Ian, Cindy, and uh, Kathy. I can't imagine that happening so much, simply because I feel like this would probably bind them together a bit more. Um, I think uh, we've also I... been we've 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 done the feud right. Like we've gotten yeah. past this point. My my take on on Leo's um first bit here, if you don't mind me chiming yeah. in, um basically I see some of this happening, like the fucking fucking Rocky doing his best Alfie Moon twenty eighteen. You Beal women are all the same. I can see that, but I can see Kathy being like, "You deserved it, mate. You you nearly killed my two grandkids. Fuck you. Yeah, you you've caused like, so many problems for me." Like, like, I'm not saying in a situation where you marry your wife or your husband and they set a cafe on fire that involves your grandkids and then they get pushed down the stairs. I'm not saying you'd be like, yeah, you deserve that. But you would heavily be like, yep, yeah, you fucking deserve I can imagine that, it just being a thing where Kathy's like, fuck, I can't, I can't choose men, can I? <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. It's just rough. But I like it. I think it's, a, it's also a good way to have Rocky get a fitting exit as, as much as he, he's only been there for a couple of years. It's probably been one of the best new characters introduced in a long time. 
like a character who genuinely fit the role and fit the character they wanted him to do. Um, and he he's always had fairly high profile stuff to do, so it would make sense he'd get a proper like Christmassy type exit. Um, I I guess it would be a good idea to have the door open for a return because I can't imagine in a couple of years he's gonna be like, man, the grass ain't always green. A fucking hell. But I don't know. He left really suddenly, and that's probably pissed off a lot of people. So. Yeah, we don't know. actually know how he left. Like we don't know, like well, why he that left. Was sudden it was, and I can't imagine he'll be doing many interviews afterwards. But you yeah, know, I feel like it probably would have upset a decent amount of people. Um, but it's all speculation, of course. Uh, so yeah, let's carry on with this. Or just leaving the square disgraced, which I think is the best idea. Leave the the square in disgrace. Yeah, so as well. everything that he's done. And he leaves the door open if any other executive producer wants to bring him back. Or if Brian Connolly wants to come back. Because he is my favourite character in this open moment. Next storyline, Sharon and Keanu. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> fair enough, fair enough. In the last moments of Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's the good take. Church, um, just before Sharon and Keanu Rocky are about to get married. has burnt all of his Karen bridges, Karen reveals right, everything so to Sharon about how Keanu faked kidnapping Albie. Ah, uh, character bias. Biasy. And tried to kill the country right. with Albie. Also, Karen reveals the original reason for Keanu getting back together with Sharon was in order to get full custody of Albie. Oh. At first, Karen and Sharon will oh. not believe Karen. Christmas Eve, okay. Karen reveals everything to Sharon. Oh. Oh. And that could be like jilted lover, like, oh, it's fine, because, you know, Sharon's going to be compelled by... I should just let fucking Leo do the talking for this one. Um, But, you know, fuck it. We love theories. It's why I will just say, I wasn't necessarily expecting to cover this theory so heavily, but it's just, it's one thing that I want to, I want to do simply because there's not enough of it in the space. Um, Like we have talking, we have talking Wolford and now, now Leo Burton's done some theory ideas. Like, let's have more of this. Like, it's not going to come from us. We're shit. <laughs> this is not our style. We're not very good at plotting out like, you, what's going to happen. You've seen me on Strictly. Doing um, Strictly. My fire's not that big. Like, <laughs> like we, we, aren't, we aren't writers in any sort. You know, we're not going to be producing these theories. But at least, at least if we can shed some light on some of these cooler theories. And, you know, if you disagree with it, that's fine. But it's still... The reason why this this like EastEnders Christmas has been so exciting is because we've been speculating since February what's going to happen. So it's just fun to like theorize and like talk through ideas. So I'll just make that fully clear now. Like, yeah, I'm appreciate... just going to add on to that point. Yeah. I'm just going to add on to that point. Appreciate it because like this has been the best in years. Obviously, I would love if more people commented and went. This is what I think. Well, Jeff, this is what I think. Well, Donnie, this is what I think. Because I feel like it's much better if we all come in a circle and speculate than just some guy on a mountain screaming, I speculate that fucking Cindy Beals, the body on the floor. Grand. Fair enough. Like, um, because everyone's just going to rip off someone else's theory, let's be honest. You ripped off Talking Walford's theory. I I ripped off Leo Burton's theory. I, like, let's just be honest about that. Because... You know, we're not the greatest theories, uh, theorists, and that's it. I I do want Karen to reveal all the Sharon on Christmas Eve. Because I'm imagining that sit-down conversation where Sharon's like, yeah, Keanu's the love of my life, the love of my life. Yeah, I, yep, I you suppose just before your we carry on that, I just want to say, like, send love to Leo Burton. Uh, their channel is Entertainment, Entertainment. World um, on YouTube. They have 50 that is subscribers. That's a very good spot. So get the, get those subscribing get those subscriber numbers up, boys. We've yeah, we're a, a big channel and we're you. helping out. The, we're helping out the small channels. Let you know, give give this person some love. We... Uh, that's all. That's a joke, by the way. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, the, uh, you can tell me by laughing. Um, yeah, we're a very uh, small channel. Help send some love. Um, because we need more. We need more more stuff like this. Um, 
But yeah, Karen revealing to sh like Sharon all because look, Karen and Keanu's relationship has obviously been getting worse and worse as Keanu is digging more and more of a hole the further it goes and the more time he spends lying and diving and fucking doing all that. Um, so it's obviously, it's been causing a wedge between them. So I do think that by the time Christmas rolls around, Karen's got to be fucking fed up. Like, I'm tired of your shit. You're not the boy I raised. Like, you are, you, you just, you, you disgust me. Like, so yeah, revealing that on box on Christmas Eve. And then obviously on Christmas, because you have the idea that obviously Sharon's not been fucking, she's no saint either. Albie's not even his fucking child. So she's like, ah, oh, is it worth it though? Like, you know, he, does he have to know? Do I have to care? Like, obviously she will, right? But then is it going to be, is she going to still go down the altar and expose him in front of everyone? Like, fuck you. And then I Phil's am... going to be there and Emma's going to be there. <laughs> Kat's going to be with be honest. Alfie. Let's oh. be Let's be honest, the OG has to be there, the original gangster, in his little flat paddy cap. Got all Malcolm. Malcolm has to be there. Like, she fucking, yeah, she sent him to me and I'm being accused of a kidnapper. I tell you what, and I tell you now, folks. <laughs> Got yeah. all Malcolm, get him in there. All right, let's uh, carry on the video. However, when um, Sharon and Keanu tell each other their vows, inside the church, Sharon begins to realise that Karen might actually be telling the truth. So before the wedding ceremony, Sharon asks to speak true, to Keanu in her king room. She did get back Whilst the in the room, custody. Sharon forces Keanu to admit what he's actually been doing and how he's actually been using Sharon in order to get full custody of Albie. Oh. After the conversation, Sharon tells Keanu that he's not actually Albie's father and also reveals that Phil is actually Albie's biological father. After that, Sharon reveals that their marriage is over and tries to leave the room, but Keanu has already locked the door. So this will be the end of the first episode. God, I'm so ready. I'm, I'm ready for this. Um, essentially, they say that, uh, fucking, just as basically Sharon will go, ah, oh, she's tell, she's she's lying. Karen's lying. Um, and then, but slowly through the wedding, Keanu's gonna, you know, probably be, not not the nicest. He maybe he's kind of, you know. And then they need to have a talk in the changing room. Like, oi, what happened? She's gonna coerce a confession. Um, and obviously this is going to set up to Sharon being like, well, he's not even yours. Fuck you. And that'll be a massive like explosion and fucking wow, great stuff. Anything to add? No, no, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with that. So it has quite a big part, first episode. It creates the tension. Also, just basically knowing that Phil's the dad to after unravel all their shit. Throughout the second episode, now that he knows that he's not Albie's father, and obviously Peg is in Spain, oh. and also he's lost his wife, the woman in... Fucking hell. All right, so the first, the end, first, the end of the first episode is Keanu locking the fucking door, apparently. Like, locking that door yeah. in that changing room, learning that Phil is Albie's actual dad. And it will give reason for, you know, reason to make Keanu more of a villain. Because, look, he's desperate at this point. He kidnapped his own fucking kid. <laughs> like, he's desperate. He's desperate to not have another kid taken away from him. So I think I think that's a really cool way to end the first episode. Me too. I think it's a great way to end the episode. It would... It would be dramatic because then you go, oh, he is the body on the floor. So it's kind of like swerving people. You know what I mean? So yeah. you think he's the body on the floor, but he's not actually. So I, I uh, again, my opinion stands that it has to be a legacy character who dies. And I, as much as I want Dean Wicks to be the body on the floor, which he is, and he is a legacy character, I can't see it being Keanu. He's only been there from like 2016 and he left because he was hunted out of the square and he came back. 
And he met Peter Fell and fucked Phil over again. So he's probably going to be wanted again by Phil. So, yeah. Well, I say this. I've also just actually put it on the screen. And I will actually make it. I probably should have done this earlier. <laughs> but I didn't know how fucking viable it was. So, uh, if you just, uh, have any more that you can chat shit with about this one. Do you want me to chat shit or are you ready to, to continue? Um... All right, so if I play that, it has that, heard, that is heard. All right, we now have all, we now have video, motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So I probably should have done this from the start, but oh well, I'll I'll we'll do it more in future. Um, I just hope it's not a massive bitch to uh, sort out in editing. Um. <laughs> I'm not editing this, so I'm fine. I'm well, it's more fine. so if it actually gets picked up in the editing. Um, ah, fair enough. Fair so, enough. So, you know, maybe it won't even be recorded. Who the fuck knows? Um, but we'll try. All right, so, yeah, I like the way that they're going to end it, but all right, let's carry on. He loves, he's lost now. Throughout the second episode, Sharon will be trapped inside the room with Keanu, who's becoming more and more unstable by the minute. In the end, Zack will break into Sharon's room after Sharon sends Zack a text, calling him for help. This will lead Zack to push Keanu against the wall and threaten Keanu to leave the square and no, never just, return. I've just put Leo in it. I've just put, Leo, I've just put Leo in the little box. Exits the room. <laughs> Leo's in a little box, just chilling. Um, I need a photo of Leo in a little box. <laughs> uh, absolutely <laughs> fucking juvenile, but it's just... Because because it's obviously a phone record and it's all fucking cropped, so I've just cropped it all fucking... I'm trying to take a screenshot, so I'm not, it's not doing it. <laughs> I, I, mate, I'm absolutely derailing this fucking video right now. Um, I don't care, this is a, this is a fucking unhinged video. <laughs> Um, there we are. Leo's in the little box. In Leo's big boxes, little big, box. Big fish ever fish cardboard box. Um. <laughs> Technology does wonders. All right, let's carry on now because this this theory's been good. Why is he right? This. Why is he health? All right. After you write and say, and goes to the wedding ceremony. At the wedding ceremony, Keanu will um, okay. announce in front of all of the guests that his wedding, that his um, marriage with Sharon is over. And also, he will reveal everything about Phil's one night stand with Emma. I can imagine this all. Um... I can imagine Keanu just getting like blind drunk at this point. Like, he'll be just, oh, fuck it. It's my last night, you know. May as well enjoy my own fucking wedding party. So I think, I think, I'm wondering if they actually get married properly or not. Like, I wonder if they, you know, if it happens too late. But it's also never that fun to actually be like, oh, you're still married technically. Oh, I need a divorce. I'm not giving you a fucking divorce. You know, like, ah, uh, yeah. But yeah, essentially, but it could be the body on the floor. I like, I don't need to fucking I don't need to explain it anymore. I just they've just heard. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, so I like it. Zach standing up for Sharon, you know, good reason. Um, and obviously Keanu fucked off. And also how Phil is actually the biological father of Albin. This would create a massive confrontation between. Phil and Kat. Phil will um, also oh. threaten Keanu and tell him he's got until the end of the day to get off the square oh. whilst he's a dead man. This sets up Keanu and Phil. Oh, yes, this is what Christmas is for. I forgot that he knew about, about Emma. I forgot that Alfie let it slip. Oh, 
Go that's fuck that's gold. That's gold right there. As possible bodies in the floor on Christmas Day. He also sets up Keanu no cat and Phil as the possible seventh person seventh person or in brackets killer on Christmas Day possibly. So that means that now we have Rocky's not Keanu's not dead man die, walking. Uh, <laughs> Keanu's not going to die, of course. <laughs> That's another time. Phil um, said, "I like it. I think this is going to be a pretty rough Christmas for Phil." Um, but I also mm -hmm. think it'll show a lot of really good parallels to is it is it 2019 where Keanu leaves the first time and like Martin's hired to kill him and then Linda stumbles in and then they fake it. I think that was 2019. So, like, that, it was there'll, be, 2019. there'll, be, a lot, I there'll the... be a lot of parallels to that. I, and I think that would be exciting. I think I watched the New Year's Eve or New Year's Day of 2020 um, Christmas episode. It might have been New Year's Eve in 2019 or New Year's Day 2020. Yeah. Don't go beyond that. Um, but yeah, nah, someone will be on the let's comments. continue. Fuck you, Piggy. Oh, sorry, Fuck I like you, how... Piggy. I was initially worried that we were just going to listen to the theory and say nothing, but. This is already like half an hour. <laughs> like, nah, you know what? This is a proper reaction video. Actually, discuss what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm gonna just do. Sorry, I'm just gonna do the Pokemon and be like, or not Pokemon, fucking sniper off and be like, oh my god, he's so smart. Look at him, so smart. Oh, obviously, gonna be the victim. But now we've got two possible victims on Christmas Day. Okay. The fallout of the events of Christmas Day will cause the collapse of Phil and Cat's mimic. And it'll oh. pave the way for Phil and Sharon and Cat and Phil to reunite. For Phil and Sharon and Cat and Alfie to reunite, not Cat and Phil. Okay. I also I'm sorry to sorry to for all the screen grab. It just I have to pause the video sometimes, right? Sorry. Um no <laughs> never it, like just don't don't pause any video when someone's speaking because the amount of like frames you just catch them on as they're like, Way like, oh Jesus. Um Fuck, what am I saying? I've never thought of Phil possibly being the body on the floor at Christmas. I I just maybe it's just me believing too heavily that look, it's Steve McFadden. He's an EastEnders legend. He's probably the most popular EastEnders character in the last thirty years. Like I Mick just Parker. can't I can't imagine hmm, I just can't imagine him being killed off. It's also the fact that he's also been enjoying, like, actually being on the show more. Like, he's actually hanging out with all the people now, you know. Like, he's actually, he, he went to the fucking, like, NTAs, I think. He went to the, he went to an award show, which he never fucking does. Like, he seems like he's having a good time right now. But there are setting up a lot of possible fuckery. Like, you know, he's up with Emma, he's, he's Sharon's baby's dad, you know, maybe he's, he's been keeping Cat and Alfie apart. Like, there's a lot of stuff that would make him a possible dead body on the floor at Christmas. But I just, I don't know, I just believe too strongly in saying that it would be fucking bold to kill off Phil Mitchell. Uh, yeah, there we are. That's my bit. Rocky's not obviously going to be the victim, but now we've got two possible victims on Christmas Day. So, and they're all saying that obviously Rocky's the fallout not of the events of Christmas Day will cause the collapse of Phil and Cat's mimic, and it will pave the way for Phil and Sharon and Cat and Phil to reunite. Absolutely. For Phil and Sharon and Cat and Alfie to reunite. Oh, yeah. and Cat and Add the second take in there, just in case. The next one is out, Suki I and wouldn't. Nish. Just say the lobby curtain in the background. Day, we see Suki cooking Christmas dinner. And there's a knock on the door. And Eve enters the kitchen. Oh. Suki will question Eve about why she's here. And Eve will explain that basically she still loves Suki. Even after everything that's happened. Suki then questions um, Eve about what's in her hand. I and suppose explains. I will just make the declaration. Okay. I can imagine this was probably recorded before this week's set of episodes where the Nish and Suki affair has been revealed. Or Nish and Eve. Eve and Suki affair has been revealed. Eve and Suki. Um, Eve and Suki. You know, don't be like, you're wrong because this happened. It's like, yeah, they didn't watch the fucking episode yet, did they? 
<laughs> you'd be fucking morons. There we are. There's evidence that will clear Kirat's name for oh. good. Suki and closes Kirat's the door name. and unwraps the paper to find a disc saying, What really happened oh. to Van Veer? Van Veer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on it. Eve I then like goes it. into the living oh. room. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm getting a lot of parallels to a lot of previous Christmases though with this. I will just say. Ah, oh, here's a video with the with evidence on it that will mysteriously get played. Um I'll just I'll just say that as a side, you know, don't read too much into it, but you know All of the rest of the Panasar family are opening Christmas presents. Suki then says she wants to put something into the DVD player, which she does. Okay. As the footage and the disc plays out, we begin to realise that Eve has found the original, unaltered footage of Ravi Galati killing Van Veer. Okay, good. I, li I like the delivery as well. I like the thing. delivery. Look, they're getting chuffed with this. They're proud of this one. They should be. Oh, do you know, do you know be funny, though? Um... If they open the disc and it's just Nish twerking <laughs> bollock neck <laughs> throwing it back. Up. He's just bollock neck is oiled up and he's fucking he's fucking twerking his cheeks off. <laughs> <laughs> it's I just it's just a dodgy karaoke version of last Christmas. Who do that? <laughs> In the aftermath of footage playing out. All hell breaks loose at the Panastar's house. In a massive chaotic confrontation, as Nugget and Freya rage at Ravi, Ravi yes. begins comes quite violent towards Suki. It's then that Nish decides to take Suki into the kitchen in order to protect her. In the, ki the kitchen, things go from bad to worse. Yeah, I will just say, he says protector, we all know what's happening. Nish is like, what the fuck? You know, like, she's probably gonna, probably gonna attack Suki again. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm just stalling for time, I'm not ready, this is gonna get fucking grisly, I know it. As Nish finally reveals that he knew Ravi killed Van Veer oh. all along, and also allowed Kirat be put behind bars for a murder he did not commit. Nish and Suki and have a violent confrontation in the kitchen, which ends with Nish beginning to violently attack Suki, which is when Vinny enters the kitchen. Ah. He immediately notices what's going on, so in order to protect his mother, he grabs a champagne bottle and whacks Nish over the head with it, which will knock Nish Unconscious. Then just uh, chime in here. Um, I wouldn't have him attack him with a champagne bottle just because uh, that would be too many champagne bottles being smashed on Christmas yeah. Day. I honestly, um, I'd, I'd I feel say like, it, I'd say it's the vase. I'd say it's the vase or something, right? Yeah, um, but I'm just saying you're you're adding oh, Leo, don't this is just a bit of a criticism. Uh, um, don't take this too heartily, but you're adding too many things into this you're st you're like we we were having christmas day dinner leo right we're, we're, the three of us are sat down having christmas day dinner you're cooking the turkey and then you're like lads 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 i fucking stuffed this turkey and we're like no you haven't and then he fucking just fists that turkey's anus with stuff and just fucking eh, 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 look at all that stuffing in there and it's like nay i only wanted a tiny bit of stuffing don't put all that stuffing in there please all right yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. I just, you just wanted to... You He's just adding too much to me. You wanted to make that analogy one. really hard and do the motion, didn't you? <laughs> no, you don't even care that much. Um, Yeah, I'd say perhaps not the... If if that plate was still there, you know, the plate where he's like, oh, this is my favourite plate, you know? Uh, it, was my, it was my dad's or something. If that plate was still here instead of it being smashed, um, maybe like maybe that. I I just take the vase, just have him hit him with a vase or something. I do like how obviously has added Priya and Avani into it as well, just to update it and make sure it's relevant. 
Obviously, Priya would be fucking livid because, you know, it's just oh Ravi God. being a fucking. I mean, Priya's the wife. Oh, the. Not, not, not the kid. Um, and obviously she'd be livid because she strongly believed it. Um, but I feel like, I feel like Priya, Nav- uh, Priya and Ravi will get a bit friendlier around Christmassy time. You know, like maybe I'll start seeing eye to eye, and then suddenly, oh, you bastard! You fucking lied all along. Um, and no, nah, it's good. It's good. Um, and obviously Vinny coming in to help. I know I made the prediction that Vinny's going to die this week, which I no longer believe <laughs> at all. Um, but I said it, so I believe it. I hold 100% he's dying this week. I believe it. I believe it. I believe, I believe, I believe. Um, I believe, I believe I can fly. Um, so, yeah, I like it. Vinny getting his redemption, of course, as well. But Which he's yeah. having already, and I... It's why I think he's gonna die. It's been tacked on a bit too fucking, a bit too fiercely better now. But yeah, anyways. And he will will presumably die, but he oh. actually escapes from the kitchen. Well, okay, so he escapes Suki as well. And Vinny are talk outside. This could create a massive revenge storyline for Nish Panasar to explore next year. This okay, will be a bit next like... year. All right. I like it. I like it. I'll probably. I should probably let them say this next bit, but I'm gonna take it anyways. Fuck you. <laughs> Choose a video, mate. Um. Nish is one of yours once again being blocked again. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just leaning off of this way. Sorry. Yeah, you sorry. never do it. You literally. This is the first. You're doing this today and ne- never before. Um. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Papa. I'm sorry. I think there's a lot of storyline potential still there with Nish, like. There's still a massive arc where he goes around manipulating, fuck it, my marriage to Sookie's over. Oh, well, just start, like, fucking wheeling, dealing. Like, oh, hello, Stacey. Oh, hello, fucking Kathy. It's everyone, just smoothing everyone. Uh, like, right. On, a, um, on, like, a... He's just fucking everybody over. And it's like, who's gonna who's gonna do it? Um, What I think, personally, is just to make this theory more relevant, and... Um, to update it. I don't know if he's going to clarify this, but how I'd update it is that he tells, we obviously know he tells Ravi that, oh, look, uh, she's sleeping with Eve. So I'd obviously just have them three know, or them two know, and then on Christmas Day to add to it in the fucking, like, have Nish not know that he's sleeping with, so, or that Eve is sleeping with Sucky and Sucky's sleeping with Eve. On Christmas Day, when they have the file in the article, he goes, oh, I know you're a lesbian. I know it. And then she's like, I've always, yeah, mate, I I never loved you. And that's where the following conversation comes in. It's not just because, yeah, I killed Rand here. It's because of built up frustration. I mean, it would be a big, past. it would be a bit, I'm, well, it's just, you, I don't, I think you're you're just doing what you said. He was doing your stuff in it too full. You don't need this extra I am, stuff. I am you stuff don't need in it too this full. extra stuff. Um, obviously, you know, Suki strongly believed that she killed Rand here, and that fucked her up for months. Um, and obviously her, like her son, getting put in life behind bars, and Nish knew like that's a massive betrayal. Um, so you know, probably don't need the extra stuff. Um, yeah. Little Mo and Trevor esque. Okay, little Mo and Trevor like. It won't be an exit for Nish in this year. He will return the following year, but now he's. He's a lot more dangerous than what he was. Yeah. Because he's lost everything. Fair enough. Exactly. Pa- Perfect. He, the only family he's got now is Ravi. He's lost his wife. He's lost the trust of Vinny. His son tried to kill him. I mean, he didn't even like... So he doesn't even love Ravi anyway. Like, Ravi's just that fucking... Finish as he tries to get revenge on Eve, Suki, Vinny, everyone else in their circle. Yeah, perfect. Perfect stuff. I like it. I like the way they're doing that. It's just there's so much extra stuff you could do with Nish that it feels like if he does die at Christmas, you can explore it. And I feel like it would be a waste. Like, I don't know if he's still around for another year, but I could still imagine him being around for like a fucking chaotic, like, six months. At least, right? 
Face has got to be good stuff. I, I like it. I like the angle. Which I would love. Next storyline is the Denise and Jack Bunning storyline. Prior to Christmas Day, I believe that an affair will take place between Sam Mitchell. Oh. Yes, Sam Mitchell, not Stacey Slater and Jack Bunning. We'll just say that a couple of days ago, their theory was Stacey and Jack, not Sam and Jack. So, you know, people can change their mind on the theories. Perfectly fine. No, they can't. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is the I'll internet. The you said it once. I'm going to click this video. We're ending the video. Fuck, fuck you, Leo Barton. Fuck you. You, you, you changed your mind. <laughs> you changed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I all right. How is it taken differently? I wonder if they will have just essentially just... It's like it's like fucking guess who, where you're like flicking up the names and it's like, all right, I take out Stacy, I put in Sam. Is they uh, but they're wearing the same clothes? Is it going to be the same way or is it going to be different? Uh, let's see. Which will be revealed to the Browning family on Christmas Day. Yes. Um, after Amy Mitchell reveals to the whole of the Browning Fox family that Sam and Jack have been having an affair. And basically, in the first episode, Amy will leave a note for Jack saying, I know about you and Sam. I would just say it would have been good to have a bit of like, how does Amy find out? Would have been interesting to have as a yeah, whole. Yeah, yeah, that would have been, you know. But you know what? Fair enough. It's a theory for Christmas. We don't, you don't need to fucking build everything. We're not, build, we're not building December. We're building Christmas. So fair enough. Tell Denise, or I will. Would make sense, sir, for the character. It will lead to a massive confrontation between Denise and Jack, and will lead to Jack being the murder victim on Christmas Day. As after a massive argument, Denise states that their civil par partnership is over. Later on, Jack goes to the Vic to try and win Denise back. However, after a while of Denise ignoring Jack, Jack will become violent and attempt to assault Denise. Oh, uh, whoa. Whoa. Jesus. Jesus, we were in the right lane and he fucking fired the left lane straight away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I, like for, me, for a lot of like other me, characters I can imagine, but I can't imagine Jack doing it. Like me, like me, we were in the car, no need to fucking like fucking swerve right. into that in five lane. It, like, is it, is it applied sexual assault or is it just 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 battered? I I don't know. He he's upsetting me now. He's scaring me. The way that Leo said it kind of made me go. An attempt to assault Denise. Right, sure, the way they the way he's delivered it, I'm I'm just nervous. As this happens, Amy enters the rural Vic. And wax Jack over the head with a stool in order to get him off. Jack will then come running towards Amy. It's then that Amy spots a bottle of wine and wax Jack round the side of the E of Jack's head. Okay. Which knocks Jack out. Amy then wax Jack round the head several more Fuck times you now. and states all of this. All of this is your fault. Jesus. This for me would be the perfect way to end I mean, to close out um Christmas Day's second part with the shock of Amy Mitchell. The a couple of years ago we wouldn't have imagined her doing this. Okay. I they did they did just change the name and acted like it was different, I will say that much. Um I do uh they did just change the name and put the same makeup on. Um, I don't think it's as strong if it is with Sam. I think it's a lot more interesting with it being tied to being Stacy as a whole. I would like to say that much. Uh, just the amount of stuff you could build on with this affair, you know, where the Brannings like returning and you know set up possible Max soon. Um, I just, I still, I still don't think Jack's one who dies at Christmas. I think it would. It would be impactful enough to, like, work because he has been there for, what, like, fucking 15 years at this point, you know? He's fairly been involved in a lot of high-profile storylines, you know, a big legacy character. Um, 
But I like the idea of setting it to be someone unsuspected, like Elaine or like Priya or something, or even Amy in this case. But I'm not entirely sold on this part. I won't lie. What do you reckon? Let's see how he finishes. Yeah, yeah fair enough, fair enough. But with all of her depression and everything else, I could really see this happening. I couldn't see Denise killing Jack, but I could see Amy killing Jack. Okay. She became really unstable. And her, her relationship with Jack is not good at the moment. <laughs> so it would mm, make a lot enough. of sense saving. Need, need, need a second. Funny. She's mental. I didn't didn't say it specifically, but it's really unstable. Just she's fucking mental. She is. If I was saying it, that's what I'd say. Leo, 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 you you are the best commenter. Ten out of ten. Yeah. uh, hmm. Yeah. I'll just I'll keep killing Jack. I think. Boxing Day would then open up with Denise yelling oh, fuck, at Amy. That's it. And... That's it. That's the Christmas series. Um, anything See, else? End of video, guys. That? See you in part two. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say to that aspect? I don't. It would hate the idea, but I feel like it would be underdelivered. Yeah, I feel like it, we would have promised a lot, and for what we're taken away. I don't know if it's worth it so much. Um, that's just, I think that's my initial reaction to it. Maybe by the I, end of the video, my... when they explain it more, I'll be on side. But as of now, I'm not entirely down for it to be Jack. I just, I don't um... think he's, I don't, it feels like he has to be an enemy of the six. Obviously, they're going to have one like main thing they do that's going to affect everyone. Like Dean's assault is Dean's rape's gonna, you know, that's why all, there, all the six women are gonna be there. But it feels like you you really have to ramp it up dramatically to have Jack Warrant being there at Christmas. Yeah, sorry, okay. Uh, it, 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 the, pro, uh, it's like if you're, again, a Christmas example, it's like if you're promising a lovely Christmas day dinner, you're expecting big turkey, a big duck, a big chicken, you're expecting big. And they come out and they just give you a fucking sausage and pie and maybe spuds. They're like, mate, I was expecting a fucking leg of a turkey, fucking mashy potatoes, carrots, parsnips. You know, I was expecting a Calvary. And you just gave me uh, sausage, spuds and fucking pie. Like, that's how I would feel about that. It's like you want something big and you're giving me Jack Branning. Like, they're not, not, not to show on Jack Branning, but... Um, I mean, it's even I with feel Dean. Like... It's even hard because they just they just don't have these characters to kill off. Like uh, Dean the, the problem... is an important character in Linda's development and important to the show in a sense. But a lot of the modern fans, I didn't watch much of Dean. Um, um the the problem is is you're relying on the past to really hammer home who dies. Um, that's why it's not going to be someone modern like Nish, because if you're, because Nish finds out at the time of recording on the twenty eighth, I believe, or the twenty ninth, I think he finds out on the twenty eighth and twenty ninth. Yeah. And basically, you don't want to kill him off because you could have this year long feud with Sucky and Eve, and then at Christmas twenty twenty four they kill him, or Finny tries to kill him, or Nish kills Finny. And then Ravi kills Nish. Um, you basically don't want to waste him at Christmas. I've just realised that now. Because if, um, if they found out in June about Nish, I would have been like, yeah, yeah, fine. Um, kill him in December. But now I don't believe he's a body on the floor. I believe wholeheartedly it's Dean. And it's just the same like with Jack. If Jack's the body on the floor, it's like it's like you're going up on a roller coaster. You're going up like that. Well, it's more so if the... Going down. If they do the Dean, it's the it's the understood and probably the most reliable one that will be big enough to warrant the response. But if you do the the Jack one, you're kind of like hold hold my beer, lads. You know we're not done yet. Like it's 
you know, you've got to build a lot on what the actions are of Christmas through this. So it was like someone suggested maybe like Lily kills Theo um, in this in a similar way. And then it would be the big cover up to because, you know, Lily's like, well, like 13, a uh, teen mum. She doesn't need this, you know. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's similar thinking. Um, but then also I've said that I think Vinny dies this week. So, yeah, you know, we all say things. <laughs> so what have you done? Sorry. You killed him. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> After a few moments, the news <laughs> Sorry, so I just had to. It's a perfect place to stop. <laughs> sorry. I love, I love how. I, sorry, don't play. Yeah, I love how we passed it at the exact time. <laughs> and, and it's like done? he was almost. It's like he responded to us. What have you done? I'm not finished On yet. The <laughs> uh, there we are. Great. Well, calm down and tell Amy to get out of the pub. Old Denise. Makes it look like Amy was never there. The rest of the six women were then entered the scene, shocked to see Jack on the floor dead, and Shavano state the lines. He's dead! That's good in the aftermath of Jack's murder, Denise takes the rap, and the other five women cover up Jack's murder by setting the Vic light. Oh, on fire. Possibly it. Would make sense if like <laughs> set the Vic light. Because if you see any shit, the, um, would make <laughs> sense <laughs> if like they set the Vic light. Sorry, we're fucking children, Jesus. They are just absolutely <laughs> fucking. Because if you see any clip, the um, the flash forward we saw in February. You actually see a fire in the background. Do we? Which leads me to believe, possibly, this could be a subtle hint that the Vic's going to burn down. And it could be a great way to cover up Jack's murder. Okay. Um. Oh, all right. Let's just. I'm just want to have a have a brief little look. They say fire. They just mean mean like a candle or something. No, there was an actual fireplace on fire, like in the background. Oh, so you know where they had the night body, um, yes, and you had the six women. So behind Stacy and Denise, I believe, there was a little fire lighting. Um, I don't know whether it was an electric one or fire. I think it's an actual fire. Yeah, yeah, there's a fire in the background. Yeah, but you know, I can confirm there is a fire burning on in like in the Queen Vic on Christmas. They never usually do the fire in like in the Vic, so. All right, I like it, I like it. This will also lead to Lauren and Penny's return in the first few weeks of the new year, after Penny is called back to the square to identify Jack Branning. Also, I will just say, are Lauren and Penny not returning before Christmas? I don't know. Like, maybe it's just me assuming, but let's just assume that Penny's mum's died. <laughs> let's just assume that she's dead. Make the most sense to me. Be the only reason she'd come back to the square. I would imagine. I don't know. I, I don't fucking don't know. Make a job. I restrain my, my statement. I just. Yes, dear. Don't you fucking dare. Um. I, yeah, I just, I just think that Penny's mum's dead. And that's why she's back. Yeah. Um, You're my love. Get over it, King. And that's what I think. I just. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Jack does die, but I don't feel like they'd... I don't feel like they'd... <laughs> I feel it would be a bit too obvious if it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's dying. Well, Jack's dying, because she's back. Like, you, you what? I feel like there's a lot of good storyline in them trying to rebuild their fractured relationship, right? That's just me, personally, but yeah. His body, dead body. This could also lead to the return of Jet of Max and potentially the rest of the planning family. Yeah. This could yeah, also love this theory. Love this theory. Best theory. A really... Fuck Tolkien Wolford. Entertainment World's theory is the best theory. Max Branning's coming back, baby. What about Derek Branning? I mean he's very dead, so ah, come on, bring him back. I I just I just don't think you I think 
that the Brannings are being re-established and it's being made into a much more of a stronger family, right? So if you kill Jack, there's no fucking patriarch here. Like, who's the closest? Fucking Ricky. <laughs> like, I've, I, you, I feel like you need that big patriarch character, so. Interesting storyline for Penny as she tries to investigate Jack's disappearance. Slap 2024. Alright, I don't it's hate Christmas that, though. Christmas 2024. I don't hate it. She's not connected to any of the people on the square, so she would just be like, "Why the fuck's my where the fuck's my dad gone?" You know. Don't mind that. Don't mind the angle. Being a massive confrontation between Amy and Penny, after Penny learns Amy killed Jack, a bit like Christmas 2010, was the rivalry between Gillian Butcher and Stacy Slater. Oh. We're nothing but if not EastEnders fans. <laughs> it's all these callbacks, I love it. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah. Just... Ganeen learned Stacy killed Archie, who was Ganeen's husband at the time. Did they get um, married? This or? could also mean that technically we have a Ronnie Mitchell back on the square without her returning from the dead. Um, But also that we don't have Amy... Also, you we don't have um, yeah, Bonnie returning from the, the dead. Not, not you, Leo. Oh, oh, Amy, okay. a bit more like. Well, also, there's a Holly Oaks trailer outside. Oh, come on, Leo. There's six minutes left. I need to. I'm gonna have to do a video on the Holly Oaks trailer for fuck's sake. Ah, oh, bloody hell. To be in the car, like to be fucking. That's what they're trying no, to do. There's really, really good, really interesting at the moment, and I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm Having a mixture of both Ronnie and Roxy. Oh, bed shot. That would be oh. iconic. Ah, oh, I love him. I love him. Can we keep him? Can we, can we keep Leo? I love him. Or them. I don't know. I love them. I, I love I love the idea of mixing Ronnie and Roxy into Amy. It was absolutely fucked up shit, but it's so good. Because without having Ronnie and Roxy about, you need someone to fucking embody it. And if, Roxy, and if Roxy's daughter can't be a big mixture of Ronnie and Roxy, like you've just, you've just, you're just being lazy, lads. I'd also love it if they made Amy the dramatic one, out of her and Penny, and Penny becomes the party girl. Okay. And that would be fantastic, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just, it's just so wholesome. They fucking love this theory. Let's just play that again, fucking us. Their delivery's gold. And that would be fantastic, fantastic. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Next storyline is Linda and Dean. I need to give that a break. I'm fucking... Oh. <laughs> it's just... Give me a cigarette, lad. Give me it. a fucking cigarette. It's still weird to think. I feel like... Pe How old is Penny? 24, I'd assume. Because... I fucking graph that right. I'm, I'm going to be so happy. Uh, 25. I, I, I was a year say, off. It feels a little bit weird having... Like, you, you can't just remake Ronnie, like Ronnie and Roxy with Penny and Amy, because Roxy and Ronnie, they were like the same age, I'm pretty sure. But, like, Amy's, like, barely an adult yet. <laughs> but, hey... Yeah, she's only, like, 20, 15. Like, I, I don't entirely see that. But, you know what, hey, I'm I'm all about duos. I'd be perfectly happy for that. You know, some duos are the best duos. Ash and Piggy. Yeah, best duo. Ash and Slater. Yeah, another one. Watching Ash and, and Leo Burton. Right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> My belly's rumbling. Me and uh -huh. food. <laughs> now, I'm going to warn you quickly now, there are spoilers for today's episode, which is the 22nd of November. Oh yeah, they recorded it a week ago. So if All you right, haven't seen it enough. yet, you might want to close your ears for the first part. Yeah, close your ears, On Christmas boys. Day, Dean will enter the Vic with the audio recording of Linda Carter admitting, in brackets, lying to Dean about how she's, she always loved him. This will cause George 
and lights to try and throw Dean out. However, Dean will make his way upstairs and we will see a vicious confrontation upstairs. Kyorg will um, hear the confrontation and wonder what's going on and so goes upstairs and sees Dean being aggressive towards Linda. Kyorg will then grab a, bat a baton and hit Dean around the head with it, which Kyorg thinks will knock Dean out. In fact, it just makes Dean more angry, even more angry. And he starts running angrily towards Kyorg. In defence of Kyorg. Ah, what did you do that for? Fucking come here, you fucking fucking. It's like a comedy show for like the 50s. <laughs> Lou Benny, Benny fucking. The, you know what song I'm on about? <laughs> the, the fucking. Oh my god. I know this didn't happen, but could you imagine just. George! George, what you do that for? Come here! <laughs> I like. I don't, I don't hate it though. I don't hate it. I do think. I, don't, I feel like. I feel like. Mate. I feel like Elaine's baseball bat will get used or something because she. You know, she bought a fucking bat. So. Linda stabs Dean several times. What? With a sharp kitchen knife. Jesus. George and Linda will then cover up Dean's death. <laughs> Oh, stabbing him with a knife? I feel like it's got to be a bit of an accident. Linda's got to get one over on Dean, finally. Linda's got to get some justice and some closure. But I'm not sure I could imagine Linda just fucking... <laughs> like, fucking... Shanking him. I can't imagine that. Um, Like, it has to be done in a way that it doesn't make Linda seem like a terrible person. Because obviously... Or a murderer. And that's why I feel like it kind of needs to be a lane. Uh, I feel like... I feel like... The way they've angled it so far... And this is just my theory. Uh, the way they've angled it so far... I feel like Lin I feel like Elaine will be the one to kill Dean. Because I feel like throughout all this time... She's clearly got some hang-ups about sexual assault. And she's kind of ne not really over something. But I feel like with her being kind of a shit mum the whole time... I think she'll make the ultimate sacrifice and kill Dean as she finally actually kind of takes care of Linda. But I feel like that's the story that we're building to. Is that, yeah, she's been, she's been given a terrible advice. She's been t fucking terrible. Like, ah, oh, you know, we all know what he actually did. Just, just lie. Just lie about it. George needs to I feel like she'll finally, finally fully protect Linda and George and that will be how Dean will die. I'm not sure how it'll happen. I think it'll be a mostly an accident, but I think Elaine will be the one delivering that like final blow. Uh, any thoughts? No, oh, no, no, no thoughts. Just vibes. Thus, why we see um, Linda cleaning the floor in her promo for Christmas Day. This could also lead to a depression storyline for both George and Linda after every, after the events of Christmas Day, um, which could bring them, um, them both closer together and create. I suppose I will say, I couldn't. I also couldn't imagine Linda killing fucking anyone because I feel like she'd immediately go straight back on the booze, like just trying to deal with the guilt. That's just not who Linda is. Um, but I feel like Elaine will. I feel like Elaine will become very vulnerable and, you know, that's why her and Kathy will, like, become, like, really close and, like, I feel like she'll just become a shell of who she, like, currently is for a good, a good while. While she, like, kind of, like, reels from actually having killed someone. That'd be it. An affair storyline oh. of them both in 2024. I've not heard any more any other theories about this, but does anyone else think that George does feel a bit like Mick? And with the storyline that's going on with Linda at the moment, and if George saves Linda from being attacked by Dean again, I think that they're they're going to have an affair. Oh. All right, I'm 
not entirely I don't know why this one's been raised a lot. I remember talking Wolford did a did a Linda George affair. I do see the similarities between George and Mick. You know, George is seen as a good man and an honest man and a gentleman and he he you know, he wants to protect and help. Um it, it's a bit icky for me though. I I'd I'd rather I'd lit I'd rather George be with Elaine or fucking Cindy, not Linda. But you know, there's been a lot of very close scenes with with George and Linda lately, where George has kind of stepped up to be that emotional support that Elaine isn't. I could see there being a massive fallout about it, and it would be a really big story. So I'll say that much. Um, but yeah, I need to get through it because I need a wee. Linda's vulnerable. I think it would be iconic. Um, yeah. It would bring out the best of Elaine Peacock and make people love her. Lastly, I've got the Stacey and Theo storyline. Okay. Now, originally I said that Theo died. I'm not going to kill him off anymore. Oh. I've got a better idea. Yeah, he, yep, exactly that. Said Theo was going to be killed by Martin um, in the Slater house in protecting Stacy. Just that was the initial theory. So let's see what else has happened now. What what uh, Leo's changed. Now he can exit. Um, but instead of killing Theo off, obviously now I've killed Dean off. And I forgot to mention Miss Dean. It will create a return storyline for Shirley as she tries to basically work out what happened on Christmas Day. Oh, wait, hold on. With so both Jack and Dean are dying. So Dean's dying up. Dean's dying in the kitchen, and Jack's dying on yeah. the floor. Mm. Oh, oh, fuck me that pack. I kind of I don't know. I just if there is two, I would just kind of imagine they'd have to happen in different places. Like, yeah, I, like, I feel I agree. like if Nish dies, it'll be in the Panasar house. It won't be in the Vic. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Dean. And it will bring her right back up to the top, the top, cream of the cop of the crop for EastEnders. <laughs> Did he? Clear the cop. Been like that since. Yeah. Oh, I can't even remember when people thought Shirley is iconic. I think the last time was obviously with Janine and all that stuff. And then before that, I can't even remember. Probably back when Heather died. And then she's been a bit subtler since then. And then obviously she got a bit more like that when with the whole Kinine stuff and when Grey died and when Grey died. No, when Grey um it was revealed that Grey killed Tina. But apart from that we haven't actually seen much of that in the recent years. So I think bringing her back like that will make people realise, Oh I've missed Shirley. I have missed Shirley. <laughs> um, lastly on Christmas Day, Stacy will have and Theo will have a confrontation in the Slater's kitchen. <laughs> no. I, just, I just love the way they speak about EastEnders characters. It just buckles me. Oh, it's just the terminology is wonderful. Ah, oh. <laughs> maybe maybe you need to replace me. Uh. And with Martin entering the kitchen. After Theo attempts to rape Stacy again, Martin will then hit Leo, Theo with um, something possibly like a table leg. Champagne bottle. Easy. No one else has done that ever. This is a champagne bottle immediately. Or something in order to get him off her. Um, and then basically after that. Theo and Martin will have a massive tussle fight in the kitchen, which will end with Martin being stabbed with a knife what? that Theo has. Theo then goes on a run after Theo stabbed Martin. However, Martin will not die from the stab wounds. This will create a massive... Who killed 
Theo Hawthorne storyline in 2024. I'm going to have to stop you there, mate. I can't do another one. I can't do another whodunit. There's been like... There's been like three... Basically, at the start of the year, no whodunits in years. But in the last several months, there's been like three. It just... Hollyoaks did one. Uh, Hollyoaks did Who Killed Rain Royce. Emma Dale did Who Killed C Craig. And obviously it's Who Dies at Christmas. I can't be dealing with another Who Done It. I can't. Like, I feel like the big Who Done It is this year. This is the fuck. This is Who Dies. It's a different version of the Who Done It. I ain't about this one. I want mine, like. Martin getting stabbed would make sense and it would kind of mirror like when when Martin was stalked. Um when Martin was stalked by Sarah, uh she tried to stab Sarah but stabbed Martin instead. You know, it would be interesting to have that little like kind of pairing of them both being stalked, but and then again, the writers don't fucking remember that stalking storyline, so it's fine. Now I hope you all enjoyed this video. We did. If you did, then please did. leave a like and subscribe. If you've got any other ideas about how I could link storylines together, who could be the victim on Christmas Day, and what other storylines could be established next year, I'd love to hear it. For the meantime, thanks for listening, and goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, what's it? You look like you're attending a funeral, Leo, but... I did notice that until the end with the black shirt. Uh, possibly attending Jack Piano. Well, Jack I've, li Piano. I've liked it and I've subscribed on the Watching Wolford account. Uh, hold, hold, what? No, I didn't agree. To, you could, you, I didn't agree that you could like the video. I agreed you could subscribe. Uh, do you want to just go through what you like? Your having watched it all, what did you fully wreck? Right, um, there's a lot of di to divulge here. Um, obviously, I enjoy I enjoyed it, Leo. Um, this probably took us an hour to do yeah. all in total. It is, um, it because we an, sat down and we took us an hour twenty. We, 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 we're we sat, we we, <laughs> we, we had we, an hour on top of it. How? <laughs> how? How? I don't understand how we do it. Mate, the Christmas <laughs> episode's gonna be fucking wild. All right, twenty-minute Christmas episode, three hours. <laughs> That's just part one. <laughs> Despite the fact we 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 went through it and we divulged for you, we didn't just sit here with our hands on our asses, our asses on our hands, and just go. It was good. It was good. Yeah. We actually divulged for you. We gave our thoughts and our critiques. Um, I will say, if you're going to do a follow-up video, please um, in, uh, invest maybe in a f phone stand, because I've been doing this for years as well, just not online. I've been making shitty videos on my old YouTube account years before this, and I would film exactly like that, where I'd be like, hey, hey guys, hey guys, how are you? Um, no, no offense, people might be into the bouncy content, but I don't want to. I don't want to watch a video where it looks like you're in a low rider and it's bouncing up and down. Um, that's a peak on the video front. Um, that might be a bit mean, but I'm sorry. I'm just giving you that critique. Okay, it's Maybe a, also uh, don't have the, the camera angle look like um, you know, that it look like you look like the effect of someone giving a blowjob. And um, bit, bit <laughs> um, no, I will say that as a whole, it was well delivered. They kept our attention pretty well. Like, yeah, we met. I don't know if they were. I don't know if they were trying to be funny, but some of the. Some of the ways they delivered things were fucking hilarious to me. I don't know if it's just me having a weird sense of humour, but, you know, some moments absolutely buckled me. So, credits to, you know, nice, nice. It's done well. It's done well. Um, Like the theory, don't agree with everything about it, but no, ultimately, no. you know, it's an interesting theory, and we need more theories. We need more people theory crafting. Um, and it takes a lot of confidence, it takes a lot of stuff to genuinely go, all right, here's my theory, because, you know, other people are like, Ash, oh, you've got the comment. Hmm? You've got I'm, the comment, I'm you still, still have to I'm hit the comment. I'm still writing it, I'm still writing it. 
All right, Johnny. Um, but yeah, I, I don't agree with a lot of things in this video. Um, but I do like what you're going for. But again, as I said before, you are fucking stuffing that turkey. Like, that turkey was a bit fat at the start. And now that turkey's fucking, like, the time Sandman fills up with, with sand. He's about to explode full of turkey. Like, you know what I mean? I So, I, I, I suppose I'll I just fully wrap it, so... It was a good video, it was entertaining, it was, well, it was like fun to watch. Obviously, there's stuff you could do slightly better, but obviously, maybe it's their first video. It's a new channel, not really tried much of this before. Fair enough, it's difficult, it's hard. Fair enough. Yeah, no. Like, it's, uh, credits, um, kept our attention the whole time. Some fun lines that you delivered well. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff to work with. You can tell they're clearly a big soap fan and clearly a big EastEnders fan as well. It's not just like, not just nonsense. Um, so all in all, a good video, a fun theory, and I also hope that they didn't fucking. I hope they didn't mind us reacting to this. Um, but Sorry, I also took so long. didn't want to. <laughs> you know, I I I hate the reaction videos. That's just someone just sat there like whilst they're eating food. Like, yeah, it's great. You know, so we try to avoid those. Try to add our stuff on top of it. And all in all, the main thing to take away from this, go ahead over to the Entertainment World YouTube channel. Uh, we're subscribed to it on the Watching Wolford account. Go ahead and leave comments, le like the videos, and tell them what you think. Um, and, you know, they're currently at 15 subscribers. Get them up to 20. Get them up to more. You know, do that. Because if you liked it, hopefully they'll do some more. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think now is time for the outro. Well, I get a sandwich, and we resume our schedule at about five o'clock at the time of recording this, um, because I'm fucking starving. Yes. Um, I've been joined by Ash for Martin oh, Watford. I I've been joined by Leo to a shitty Leo impression. Iconic. Um, you can follow Leo Burton's YouTube channel at Entertainment World. Yes. Uh, you can follow Ash's YouTube channel at Aqua Dreams. You can follow Ash's I, Twitter at Real Aqua Dreams. You can say, follow it, his it is Twitter. Entertainment World 22. That's their app 22. on YouTube. I'll leave a link as well in the description. So, And you can follow again Ash on Twitch at Aqua Dreams. If you want some wrestling content, you want good old wrestling content, you can follow One More Match 182 on YouTube. We're on the road. Uh, I don't know what road we're on, but we're on a road anyways. 150, I guess. Um, yeah, that's the road we're on. It's it's a very slow and steady. We're nearly on 300 subscribers. I'm watching Walford, but you're not here for that. You're here for the socials. And the socials are as follows. Watching Walford on Twitter slash X, Instagram and Twitch, and YouTube at Watching Walford. And we hope you enjoyed this fairly long video. So it took an hour and 20 Genu 25 probably it genuinely took an hour 25 to watch a 25 minute video <laughs> uh, yeah we're, we're sorry um but if you want more of us reacting to your theories you video, we will we will watch them yeah um and if you want us to actually divulge them then by all means if you just want us to sit here and go yeah i mean i agree that jack's yeah. the body on the floor i mean we won't do that i've heard some you know i've been I've been around, I've seen some theory videos that certain channels have, tried, have wanted to do, or certain theories that people have built. So, you know, send them my way. It's great fun. I'm an ideas person. I love them to the core. I get excited by ideas. I'm not very good at plotting actual, like, stories or anything. I kind of, the second it's like, ah, oh, yeah, how would you make it satisfying? I'm, I'd kind of forget everything and just, like, fucking wet myself, you know? Just So keep sending the theories through. And obviously, all the credit to Leo Burton for Entertainment World on YouTube, Entertainment World 22. Go ahead and, yeah, follow, subscribe to the channel, all that. And make sure to give Leo your support, because ultimately, it takes a lot to put yourself out there and divulge a theory. Because, you know, a lot of people have their own opinions on this theory. You know, we have our own opinions. Some people might not even be very nice at sharing those opinions. Like, You're fucking shit. Nah, it takes a lot to make a video like this and just fully go through it. So all credit to them. I hope we see more from them. 
and I wish them the best, and I hope they see this one. So thank you, Leo. Thank you, Entertainment World. And thank you for watching. What did you think about their theory? Tell us in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, this is, this is a champagne bottle. Smash all the things in your fridge.